So welcome back. So in our previous videos, we've shown you how to create a factory IOC. Uh, we've also shown you how to install OpenPLC on a Raspberry Pi. So we're using the IP address as factory IO of 192.168.0.89 with a default mask of 255.255.255.0. And the PLC we're running has an has IP address of 192.168.0.114. And again, with a default mask of 255.255.255.0. So I've loaded up my PLC. And the program I have loaded on my PLC is the water treatment. So this is the treatment that you created a few, a few videos back. So what we can do is we can control the PLC now. We can control the sensors. Okay, from on the factory. So... We've got a couple of sensors running here. So we've got the fill sensor, we've got a discharge sensor, we have a start button, and we also have some registers here where we're, st where we're measuring and storing values. Now, this is great. When you're on the factory floor, you have great control. You're able to see what's happening on the plant. You're able to control what's happening. So this is fine, for instance, where you're on site. What happens if you look into a remote location? So when you're looking at water distribution plants, these are typically remote locations, and they require management seems anything else but they won't necessarily be manned so we're using something called SCADA which is supervisory control data acquisition and we're able to observe what's happening on the plant from a remote location so during this video what I plan to show is how to set up and install SCADA BR which is another part of the open PLC project um, I'm going to be loading this into a Debian environment so let's get started Okay, so I have a basic Debian machine which I've configured. I've configured this with a shared network address. This would allow me access to the internet. And I've also set up the second network card, which will be host only. It's disconnected for the moment. It's preventing any conflict. So I'm going to load up. First thing is my Firefox browser, and I'm going to navigate to the OpenPLC project page. From here, we're going to go to get started. By now you've downloaded, hopefully, and used the runtime and the PLC editor. So the runtime is the, um, the PLC, so it's the PLC runtime, it's run on our Raspberry Pi. And OpenPLC's our editor that allows us to write the ladder logic we've loaded into factory IO. So the next step is to use um, the HDMI builder, so the SCADA VR. So we're just going to download this from here. So if you're using virtual machines, if you're using virtual box, you can download the official the official virtual image from this website straight here. Okay, um, I'm using a Linux-based machine, so I'm going to copy mine using the Git repository. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to load up a terminal. Now the version of Debian I'm using doesn't have Git installed, so I'm just going to install that quickly. Okay, so super user get installed. And I'm just going to install Git. So Git's just a common repository used to store online files and packages. So once this is installed, I'm just going to paste the commands that I've copied from here. Yeah, so what this does is this clones the repository. This creates a directory and moves into the repository and then we run the install. Okay, so this might take a while, depending on the speed of your machine. Okay, when we get to the last bit here, we've got install scala.br. We just need to elevate this to a super user. So super user do. Okay, and then this will begin the install process. Okay, so once you've completed your install, we're just going to test that install word. So we're going to load up our Firefox again. And we're just going to navigate to our local host. Okay, so we can test it using local host. The port we're using is 9090. And the folder we're accessing is SCADA VR. So on the open PLC, when you access that, that was localhost 8080. 
Okay, localhost is just loopback. So this is just testing the connectivity on this machine. If I want to do this from a remote PC, I would just use the IP address in place of the local host. So I'm going to log in with the username admin admin. Okay, and this comes with some instructions. I'd recommend that you take the time to familiarize yourself uh, with some of the data types, data points, monitoring and control. Okay, so we've tested this and this works. So the next step is to update the SCADA BI. So we're just going to update what we're running. So we're going to run super user do and then update SCADA SH. So this will update the SCADA BI to make sure that we're running the latest version. Again, this can take a while depending upon the speed of your PC. Great. So I'm now going to load up my browser again. I'm just going to check to make sure that that update has worked. OK, so you'll notice some subtle changes, hopefully. Let's come back off the help. Yep, so when I log in, OK, I'm able to log in and hopefully it takes us to the home page. Fantastic. So it's taking me, it's taking me into the watch list page, which is our home page. We have alerts and information. So these will flash until you click on them. And this will bring you to a page where you can see the pens and alarms. Yep, so this will be things such as logins and system startups. So we're just going to acknowledge those and that, sh that should disappear. Okay, fantastic. So now we've got SCADA BR installed and up and running. I'm just going to reboot and I'm going to reboot into my local host. Okay, so I've rebooted my system into the local host. So I'm going to click on my network connections now. I'm set up as local host and I'm running with IP address 192.168.0.7. And I'm running with the default 255.255.255.0. Okay, on the prefix. So what I can do is I can test now that I can access this from another PC. So before we've used localhost, this time I'm going to use the IP address. So we're going to replace localhost with the IP address. OK, so I'm now able to access this from this PC. Now I can test this works from my workstation. So if I head back to my workstation, I load a browser. Again, I can test this by typing in the IP address here. So we're using port 9090, um, the folder SCADA BR. OK, so I'm able to log in to my SCADA BR both on my local PC and on a remote host, so on my workstation. So I can see that I can see across networks. So next, what we want to do is we want to go ahead now and start to configure and set up the SCADA BR with our watch list. Which has a value of 7. So I change the register range to holding register. OK, so the next step is to revisit our factory I.O. we have running. So here's my factory. I'm going to go to File, Drivers, and I'm just going to make a note of what pins I'm using for this project. So we have our input pins on the left, these are our sensors, and our actuators on the right, so these are our coils. So input's left, output right. So we're using input 0, 1 for factory, input 0 for factory IO, input 1, start. We have coil 0 for tank fill valve, and coil 1 for discharge valve. And then we have holding register 1 for pH level and holding register, um, sorry, 0 for pH level and 1 for chlorine. So I'm going to make a note of these because I'm going to need these when I come to do my SCADA BR. So flipping back to my SCADA BR, I'm just going to consolidate these so I can see them on the side. So we've got some icons on the top to do some interesting things. For now, we're going to focus on the data source. 
and I have a drop down list I'm going to change to Modbus, so Modbus IP, and I'm going to click on the plus database. Okay, from the screen I'm just going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this soft PLC. I'm going to change the transport type to TCP with keep alive. I'm the host. Well, the host, the IP address we've used to configure this device. So I'll go to configuration. Okay, it's this IP address here. So it's 192.168.0.89. Okay, it's also on the top there if you're right, so it's good enough. Okay, so I'm going to save this using the floppy disk button on the top. Okay, and the data source has been saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my factory again. And I'm going to come back onto this side, and here I have my Modbus read data. So looking at slave ID 1. Yep, so that's our setup. Uh, we've got an off offset of 0, and we're going to look for the first 100 registers. It's a bit extreme because we're only using 16, but if we click on read data, this will show us the value of our data sets, of our coils, yeah, our input, our actuators. So coil zero is true, so this would be my inlet valve. Yep. Again, if I come back to drivers, yeah, it's a coil zero. Yeah, it's true, it's my input valve. Coil one, it's my discharge valve, which currently is false. So what I can do is I can read the values to make sure the values are true or false. And I can then create my data point. My data point for this, I'm going to be consistent, so I'm going to call this fill valve. OK, I'm going to click Save. So it's coil, slave ID 1, and offset 0. So it's pin number 0, get coil 0. And I'm going to click Save. Now this is a good timing, I'm just draining in name. So again, if I read data, coil one should now be live. Yep, so offset coil one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this set here. So slave ID one, still looking at coil status. And now we have an offset of one. So coil zero is my fill, coil one is my discharge valve. I'm going to read the data and that should return true. Yep, I can see in the background my um, tank emptying. And I'm going to add a second data point. So this data point I'm going to call discharge valve. Okay, so the offset on this is one. Coil status, and we're looking at a binary, it's true or false, it's on or off. I'm going to save this. And then I'm just going to click on the status to bring these up. Yeah, so that'll go green, and then I'm going to click on the database data too, but just to bring that up, make sure that's saved. I click on data sources, I can click on the status, and then if I click on watch list, I can click on the points I wish to watch. Yeah, so the discharge valve is reading the value of 1, and the fail valve is reading the value of 0. Okay. So as we begin to fill, so I haven't updated the read time, so let's just change the read time. Yeah, it's currently set to five minutes. So let's change that to, um, let's do one second. So every one second we want to update our, our progress. I'm going to save this and make sure it's running. And I'm going to come back to my watch points. So the fill valve is now currently one. And the discharge valve is zero. Yeah, so you can see the flashes. It's just a part of consequence of the update. Okay, so we've got these valves we can begin to watch, and I can click on the chart at the bottom here on the triangle. And when I've got enough data, it will present me with a chart with the discharge and the fill valve values. Now we'll let this run for a moment. So this gives us the raw value. So the fill valve is now stopped. 
Yeah, if I look at the factory IO, I can see the gauges are moving. So I've got five and four. Once those reach a stand a set defined term, then the discharge valve will open. Okay, so the discharge valve is now reading one. Okay, we can see the valve opened. So I can create this as a, this isn't very graphical. So what I can do is if I click on the, the white sheet next to the eye, I can create some graphical views. So currently I have no graphical views in the drop down. If I click on the paper with the plus, I can begin to create my graphical view. So I can give this a name. I'm going to call this water treatment. I can load in background images if I wish. Um, so you can take a screenshot of this and load this in as a background image and then you can drop things on top. I'm not going to worry about that too much at the moment. Okay, so on the drop down list we have our components. So these are the different things that we can include within our system. So we have an online graphic, a binary graphic. So th these motors are running as a Boolean expression. So if you think back to the logic we set, these were set up as Boolean. Um, Boolean is, is binary, it's true or false. So we're going to do a binary graphic. I click on the puzzle piece next to it with a plus. Okay, and it drops in a little Lego piece. If I click on there and then the edit, I can select my points. So I have two points. So I have the discharge valve and the fill valve. So if I set the fill valve, okay, and then click save. And if I hover over there, we're going to get another menu. If I click on the picture in the middle, the Polaroid. Okay, I can set it to display text. That will give me the binary value. True or false, and I can also choose from some default set images. Okay, so I can see what the different images look like. So when it's zero, I'm going to have it as empty, and then when it's one, I'm going to have it show and fill in. So I click on save. Okay. Because this, this is now filling, I can see that this reading a value one. Okay, and I can see the fill. Now this is great, this shows me the fill. And let's do another one for the drain. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do another binary graphic. Again, it's still programmed through Boolean. I'm gonna edit. And this time the edit point is going to be the discharge valve. Click save. And I'm gonna select another graphic. So again, I want to display the text. It's going to show me the Boolean value. And then we can sort of choose some different images. So I'm just going to drop in something that looks like a motor. So it's zero is off, and so red. And when it's one, it's on, I'm going to make that green. Okay, so currently the fill valve is off. And the drain valve is off. Okay, when the valve opens, this goes green and becomes a one. And then hopefully when the water valve opens, this will go red. And then this one here will start to show that it's beginning to fill. So if we click on save. I'm now able to see what the actuators are doing. So these are real life events. These are actual changes that are happening in our environment. So if we go back to the watch list, I can see the static values. I can see one, zero. If I click on the graphical view. I'm able to see a nice illustration. So if I was to put a background image onto this that represented the factory, you know, we can make something that's really quite complex. And this would allow us to read the state and condition of the factory as the factory floor sits. So we've done the actuators, this is great. So let's look, begin to look at the chlorine um, and the pH levels. So that's these values here on the left, the registers. So we're going to go back to data set, data sources, sorry. So Click on the edit button, so that's the database of a pencil. Okay, we can see our two down here, our two data types. Now, what we have is we've reconfigured our PLC, our Modbus properties. Now we want to look at, on this side, so we're going to look now at holding registers. Okay, so register type holding, I'm going to leave the offset at zero. And again, this is the number of registers to check. So we don't have 100 registers on the system. I'm just going to click on read data. And what I can begin to see is I can begin to see the registers. So we've got this one here, which is my chlorine. 
Okay, and that's reading a value of seven. Yep. So if I go back and go file, drivers. Okay, so we've done coil zero and coil one. That was my fill and discharge. Now we're going to do hold and register zero, which is my pH level, which is currently reading at zero. And hold and register one, which is my chlorine, which is currently reading at seven. So if we start with the chlorine first, so here's the point locator. So I've read the data on the mod bus. Now I'm now going to point to it. So I'm going to change my register range from coil to hold and register. And I'm going to start off with the chlorine level first. So I'm going to have an offset of one. Okay, using a tube unsigned. So we're using offset one, so holding register one, and the Modbus data type is two bit unsigned integer. Offset is one, it's going to put the point to the number one, and I'm going to click on read. Okay, so the result there is seven. So I'm going to add a point. I'm going to make sure my point matches. I'm just going to give this a name. Okay, so I'm going to call it chlorine. Okay, I'm now going to do the same thing for my pH level. So I know my pH level is set in 0, .0 so I'm going to have an offset of 0. It's going to be my first. Okay, I'm going to read the value, which is 0. I'm going to add a data point, I'm just going to call this pH. Okay, it's offset at zero and saving this integer. Okay, so I'm going to start these as well. And then I'm going to return to my watch list. So I'm going to add my pH and chlorine. And what we'll begin to see is as the tank fills, we'll see the chlorine levels increase and the pH levels increase. Okay, so we're still waiting for the tank to open into fill again. Let's go back to our graphical view. So we've got our actuators already. Now let's edit this to include our registers. So we click on the edit button. And now I want to work on, let's do a graph. Yep, so we're going to do, um, let's do a dynamic graph. Okay, there's a dynamic range. And I'm going to click on the edit button, and I'm going to have this made by chlorine. Okay, if I go to the Polaroid, then I can now set a min and the max. So I know from my code that the max I should be getting is 7. So anything outside of 7 is too big. So I'm going to set 10. And then I'm going to display text again. That will just read the value. And the graphic I'm going to include is going to be a, let's do a horizontal level. So this will just be a, a bar that fills like an LED bar. Yeah, so that tells me my pH level. I'm now going to add another one. Sorry, chlorine level. Okay, I'm going to set this here to pH. And again, I'm just going to set this to a max value of 10 and display text. And then I'm going to do this one the same horizontal level. Okay, so I'm going to save that. So what I have is I have my values off the displays here, which I can read. So the the pH now one, two, three. So it's a slight delay um, because the read times I have set to one second. Um, I have my fill valve and I have my discharge valve. Okay, back to my watch list, I'm able to see the, the real values. Or I can see them as a graphical display. When you're creating your, your graphs to display, try and think of reference points. You know, numbers can be quite difficult to read, you physically have to read them. So if you think back to a car display, a car will display to you speed as an analog dial. The reason behind that is as a reference point. Glancing at the dial, you can tell your speed. If you have lots of numbers on these screens, think about how accessible they might be. So it may be that having a chart with a number okay, gives you a point of reference. You can look at that chart without having to really read it. Okay, so we've got our SCADA set up, we've got a nice graphical interface, and we're able to produce a watch list. If I put the chart, there's the chart.
Okay, so we can see the chart over a period of time. Okay, so we can see the pH, we can see the chlorine. Yeah, we can see the fill and the discharge. So thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll start to look at um, identifying mod bus and interception.